Hello folks and welcome to a modern video. We're finally back after I was out of town for a week or so and uh, I wanted to try out uh, another slightly different version than the one that I played last time for Naya Lands. Uh, I am really really excited about trying out this card in the shell and it looks very very promising so far. So let's dive right in. Uh, what I did in the last uh, video that I made was I tried to make room for Leyline Binding and that came with a pretty let's say a pretty important set uh, of difficulties and uh, the mana was just really really hard to make work it was very awkward to cast Ren and Six sometimes and obviously you know we needed to make sure that we had enough uh, you know stuff to do with Saga and like stuff to do with Flagstones it was kind of a mess so this list is a lot lot cleaner because it's not playing Leyline Binding and it's making up for that with the full playset of uh, Prismatic Ending we also have a Singleton Solitude and from the previous list you will also see a, a fourth copy of Arboreal Gracer this is obviously to respect uh, the, the early monkeys and like things like that that we used to have Leyline Binding in order to answer so now, we, now that we don't have that tool available to us we're gonna need to to do some more blocking and we also need to be doing some more solituding so uh, those are going to be the, the the cards that i needed to add in order to sort of offset the lack of Leyland Binding. Uh, I'm also running 28 lands in this version, as you can see over here, the 28th land being the Ursa Saga number four. Uh, this this card is obviously messed up, very important for the, the engine that we are trying to, to put together. And uh, just very, very strong card overall in this shell. Uh, we also have, you know, some Vosages, some Bojugabog, Flagstones, the, the good stuff that you have come to expect from all of my Elvish Reclaimer brews. Our uh, little Tudor uh, package for Saga is going to be one map, one Shadow Spear, one Soul Guide Lantern, and one Suran Orb. Obviously, you can try other things, but these are the ones that, I'm, that I have been the happiest with. Uh, obviously, Ren and Six is messed up. Another number call is a way to make sure that we have uh, our Nissa, our Titania, and then a one of Endurance that we can find of Nissa, by the way. And the same is true for the Solitude that I just mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, now that we go into the cyborg, we have one Sanctifier and Beck, one Orvar the All Form, and one Elish Norn. These are the little, uh, little one-off. Um, Tutors that we can find uh, with our uh, with our Elamris call. Obviously, we have some extra copies of Endurance because this card is pretty messed up. And then we have uh, two copies of Halo Moonlight. This is obviously to respect the uh, creativity matchup, but it has some extra uses against stuff like Rhinos, Living End, things like that. We have a couple of copies of Force of Vigor, Hammer, Amulet are still very important decks in the metagame. Chalice of the Void mostly for the Cascade uh, decks, a couple of Engineered Explosives, uh, which are pretty good against Creativity and like Hammer, things like that I already mentioned. Um, two more copies of Boseju are interesting, so we, we go all, up all the way to the four copies of Boseju. This is because uh, decks like Tron can be really, really problematic, and my experience has been that the only way to beat those matchups is with Boseju plus Renon 6, so that's what we're trying to set up here. Uh, finally, one single copy of Peeding Needle. Uh, this is for the matchups where maybe Soul God Lantern is not very good or something like that. So we make sure that we still have enough things to go to the with our Ursa Saga. That's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you for round number one. Here we go with round number one. This hand does not look particularly good. So we can go turn one Boseju, turn two Eldamir's Call. If we find a fetch land, that would be ideal, but... <sighs> It's kind of clunky. I think I'm just going to mulligan. This hand is significantly better. So we're going to keep this one. I think we're going to bottom just a Soul Guide Lantern here. Endurance does the same thing, except that it can also be down if we needed to. So that's nice. Uh, let's get... I think I'm going to get Stomping Ground here. Definitely getting Stomping Ground here. Reclaimer on one, pass the turn back. Um, we get to choose whether we want to activate Reclaimer on two or just cast the Ren. I think I'm gonna cast a ran and just make sure that we're hitting our land drops. Blood crap. Oh, we're getting we're getting scammed over here. All right. I imagine they're gonna take the endurance here. It's gotta be endurance plus ran, right? Yep. There's the feign death. Man, I'm. This really reminds me. <laughs> I haven't been playing modern for like a couple of weeks, and this is this is a way to be welcome back, I guess. <laughs> I, I did not miss that. Let's just, let's just say that I did not miss this. All right, cool. Pointing goes with Bloodstained Mire. We're going to take four. I don't think there's too much that we can do here. So this is just what it is. Of note, my opponent pitched to Terminate. So 
definitely something to be aware of. Um, I guess they have another Terminate to kill this. The question now is whether we want to... I think I want to get a fetch land, actually. So that kills that. But now, by getting a fetch land, I can... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to get a Windswept Heath. And now I can just make Reclaimer into a 3-4. Would love to find a land. Oops, second Reclaimer is not bad. Um, I think I'm going to go with Temple Garden. Alternatively, we could have... We can just get a Forest. A Ladamar's Call is the only reason to get the other thing. I definitely want to get a, a, a green or a red source because I want to make sure that I can cast a Ren if I draw it. Um, I could also just get a Forest and play around Blood Moon. Yeah, I guess so. Let's get a Forest. Here's another Reclaimer. So now the, f the Grief is going to be a little bit more awkward. If I was not going to find a land, obviously getting Reclaimer is it's fine. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good B plan. Sacred Foundry. That's interesting. See some Pyromancer. Okay. So Mardu's Cam, I guess. Tomb of Urami. Interesting. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to be taking so much damage from this, so I think it's worth blocking. Obviously, if my opponent drew Fury plus, plus Red card, that sucks for me, but Flagstones is an incredible top deck there. That is, that is so, so good for me. All right. <clears throat> We're doing the thing now. So I think I'm just going to get... can go get another Flagstones. Um, monkey. Okay, this is looking good. So I can go get Saga, I can go get another Flagstones. All of these are valid options. Interesting. So Lightning Bolt punishes me here. Oh, they have they have Feign Death, so I'm I'm not gonna have my opponent draw two cards. Um I guess what I could have done if what I could have done is I could have gotten a Bojuka Bog. But I think this is just better. So let's get Jetmir's Garden to make sure our mana is clean. And I'm gonna go for Flagstones. I think that if my opponent had attacked with both, I would have thought about it a little bit more. But like with my opponent only attacking with Seasome Power Mancer, the only way that that makes sense is if if they have exactly Feign Death or something like that. So I think that maybe they just telegraphed it a little too much there. Soul Guide is nice also because it means that their their thing just doesn't do anything anymore. Oh, interesting. They have the the land. Oh, Call Against Command. Okay, Fury. And make me this card, okay? Nisa down. So they got Fury down. Uh, they got Fury back. That sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna pass the turn back. No need to cycle now. Hopefully they don't draw exactly a land. Although I guess red card also is is bad for me. A lucky witness. Interesting. Well, now I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go get Saga now. So let's suck Flagstones. We're going to get a basic planes, and now we can find Saga. The question is, do I want to cycle the Soul Guide Lantern? I think the answer is yes. We're going to take five here, down to five. And the reason to cycle the Soul Guide is because we may find specifically Titania. Another Saga was exiled. So like the difference between this being a 1-1 one, one or being a 2-1 doesn't really make a difference because I'm blocking the Ragaman anyway. Expedition map, it's not great. Titania, woof, what a genius. What a genius I am. Um, yep, we're, we're just doing that. So, play Titania. We're gonna get back, I guess, a fetch land. Yeah, let's get back a fetch land. I'm going to fetch for a basic forest. Down to four, definitely scary. But I mean, there's not too much I can do about it anyway. Play map and say go. Next turn we're gonna get Sur and Orb and then we're gonna win. So we need we just need to dodge this this turn here. Obviously if they draw bold, like they have a bunch of draws that just kill me on the spot, so I'm gonna be blocking both of these. The good thing now bold doesn't do anything. Mayhem Devil? Wow. Alright, that is certainly something. I still have a 5-3. Prismatic ending. Love it. Alright, Ursa Saga. And I think I just get Shadow Spear. They're going to get a trigger, but that trigger doesn't really kill anything here. So it just goes face. And now I suit up the elemental token and we swing for six. Do you want a prismatic ending the, the elemental token? I think so. I think so. This means that my opponent can't double block, so they just have to eat the, the six damage. Obviously they can... Oh, Fury doesn't even do anything. Yeah, I think we just lock this up now. They could find, I guess, Call Against Command number two. Colligan's command would be kind of a beating here because they get to blow up Shadow Spear and destroy and the construct. 
Okay, so now my opponent can double block, they can Mayhem Devil, and they can also shadow um, ping with Lusting Mire. We'll see what we draw. We find the fetch line, which is not great. I think we serve with both. So now they have the block. They have the force block on the elemental, which is fine. Wait, what? Oh, they can make season pyro tokens. That seems fine though. I honestly forgot about the season pyro mancer, but I'm I'm cracking this expedition map anyway for uh for another saga. So I don't think this matters too much. Yeah, definitely taking this block for sure. Love this block. So now crack map. Opponent gets to ping something. I don't care. I'm at 15 now. <laughs> so it's not it's not as big of a deal as it was a couple of turns ago. Um, let's get another saga and play the saga. Pass the turn back. Top deck fury is the only thing that matters now. This is just a very lethal attacker. So oh, that's that's a fun draw. Kill ya. All right, cool. So we're playing against scam with uh, some nice, uh, I guess. Sack synergies or whatever. Endurance seems fine. Sanctifier seems fine. Orbor is kind of interesting. I think I like the Hallowed Moonlights. Orbor is really interesting. Probably not good enough, but but still interesting. <laughs> um, okay, anything else? No. So these are the cards that I want. It is these three, which are pretty good, and the and the two extra copies of Endurance. So these are the cards that I want, and then. Prismatic Ending seems kind of awkward, but necessary. I don't love the Gracers. Actually, I don't love the Reclaimers, is what I meant to say. So I think I'm going to cut two Reclaimers, maybe one Flagstones, maybe the Solitude, and that's kind of it. The interesting thing about Solitude is that it, it is kind of my only answer to Fury, besides just chump blocking it over and over again. I think the Bug is worth it. Although I guess I'm cutting down a Reclaimer, so maybe the Bog is not worth it, actually. I guess I'd rather have another Boseju in case of Blood Moon than the Bog. And I think that's kind of it. Yeah, so the last cut is just going to be one of these Prismatic Endings, I guess. Could be a Nissa. I think Nissa is fantastic, though. Yeah, I think it's awkward, but I'm going to cut one Prismatic Ending. I could see cutting uh, one of the Gracers, too. Ugh, this hand seems pretty bad against Blood Moon. Uh... Am I, just, am I actually just keeping this thing? Yeah, I think I'm gonna ship. Really want to find this. This hand is better. So let's bottom, I guess, a Windswept Heath. And the idea here is gonna be turn one basic forest. No scam is good. Love the no scam. Here's a forest. Here's Reclaimer. My opponent could have push. They could have bold. They have like a million different ways of killing this Reclaimer here. But I think like the upside is just so high. If my opponent doesn't answer it, that it's, it's worth just... Slamming it on turn one. Bloodgast. Wow. That surely is a card. Has to turn back. Turn two, hardcast Bloodgast. Yeah, I'm gonna take two. <laughs> All right, so maybe I should actually have Bojuga Bone in my deck. Wow, my opponent's deck is so weird. Um, I could counter the tokens with Hallow Moonlight, but I think that just hitting my land drops is much more valuable. Pitching Grief, interesting. All right, so end step. I think I'm not supposed to play around Blood Moon here. So I'm just going to get uh, the Jet Meter's Garden. And what to get with Reclaimer? I think I'm just going to get Saga and get this get this going. It's kind of awkward with both the Flagstones and the Renin Six that I have in hand. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, that's a draw. Okay, so now how much nonsense can I put together? So I play Nissa, play Fetchland, then go find another land. Oh, that, this is much better. So I just go Nissa, play Flagstones, trigger, and then we just make insane amounts of mana with the Reclaimer activation. So now we're going to get a basic Plains. I guess I, I have it in my hand, so here's Temple Garden instead. And now we're going to get um, green mana. We find Endurance, which is nice. I guess we're going to get another Saga here. I could get Boseju. We get to cast Ren here, if we want to. I think we'll just get another Saga. Just go super ham on the Sagas. Make red mana, just cast Ren and six. Then we, I think we just plus on a Flagstones and send the turn back. We have a three, three. Kind of awkward that our Reclaimer went back to a one, two, but I think that's fine. I think if my opponent swings at the Ren, I don't even, I don't even save it. I think I just chill. 
Fury. Imagine, I imagine this is gonna kill. Obviously, if they have the the scam, they have the scam. But okay, they do have the scam. So that's very bad for me. Uh, I also don't have a green card to punish them. So it's another just gonna get to kill everything. <clears throat> we're still gonna have double saga going on. So we're just going to be. We're gonna be constructing. <laughs> we're definitely gonna be constructing right here. Unlucky witness. You got it. All right. So two mana. Make a construct. Then I think we're just gonna get Surinor with the very first one. Play Flagstones. Say go. So we're gonna have some three threes. We're gonna have some three threes here. So this is gonna be six, seven damage. It's actually kind of interesting to just block Construct on Bloodgast and cast Hallowed Moonlight. But that, I think that just backfires a little bit too easily. So I'm just gonna block there and I'm just gonna make a Construct. I'm pretty sure my opponent has a plan for this. Like I doubt that they don't. Maybe shock the Construct or who knows, but the problem is like if I go for Hallowed Moonlight, my opponent can just choose to not bring back the blood cast and they just bring it back on the following turn. So that's not not particularly great. So now an upkeep. Let's make another dude. And I think we just get Soul Guide Lantern now. Get the blood cast. Uh I think we're gonna find the planes. Oh I forgot to gain life. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. So we swing with these dudes. If my opponent chomps with Season Pyro, we just hard cast the Endurance, so it's not that big of a deal. They just take a bunch of damage, huh? Okay, that's fine. They just did nothing? They just used their entire turn to do nothing, huh? Goblin Bombardment. All right, that's a thing. That is indeed a thing. So opponent attacks, which makes sense. I think I just block the construct with the construct. My opponent can suck both of the of their creatures in order to just kill this with first strike damage. And then I just kill them on the crackback. Okay, so we're just trading. That's fine. I'll take that trade any day, I think. Opponent does nothing, huh? Well, just gonna do this. And target the tap. Boseju is interesting. So I think we just use that there and then we just prismatic ending the season power mancer. So now if they want to use the Unlucky Witness, they gotta use it now. So that's gone. Now I'm going to Prismatic Ending the Unlucky Witness. Now play a land and swing for lethal. Opponent blocks, down to four, pass the turn back. I don't, at this point, I don't think there are many cards that matter. Engineered Explosives, I guess, would suck, but... And that's it, one and oh. Round number two, and this hand looks pretty decent, actually. So we have a bunch of options. We can, we're definitely gonna go turn one Gracer. That's that's the easy part. So we can go turn one Gracer Flagstones. Then we can choose whether on turn two, we have a couple of options. We can go call for Reclaimer, play Reclaimer. That's one of our options. Uh, that's gonna get the Flagstones engine going really, really quickly. Another option would be to call for Nissa on my opponent's end step. So we, we just play out the Boseju, call for Nissa, and then on my opponent, on the following turn, I just go Nissa into fetch land. So it, it probably is going to depend what I'm, it's going to depend on what I'm playing against. Jetmir's Garden. So I'm assuming this is creativity. That being said, I think we're going to go for uh, Nissa in that case, assuming I'm against creativity. Also, if they play Ren, I can just card cast Endurance instead. I'm clear whether that's better than just calling for Nissa. Opponent fetches. Not having the guaranteed land drop is, is kind of a big deal. So it is indeed creativity. Man, that's so close. I think I'm gonna go Endurance here. I think I'm gonna Endurance. It uh, it prevents my opponent from drawing the land. It also helps me pressure the Renin 6. So I think this is the way here. We'd love to find another fetch land. Oh, that's a good one. Ugh, but I have to play out the Arid Mesa. Yeah, I probably just have to. So Prismatic Ending there. And now Swing. We're gonna get Secret Foundry and Call on my opponent's end step. Blue and red iteration. Wooded Foothills. So my opponent could be on the Spell Pierce version of this deck. I don't think it matters too much. I still think I'm doing the same. The problem is I can't really get Nissa here. Because if I get Nissa, it only does anything if I draw a land. And if I draw a land, I'm playing Titania anyways. So I think I'm probably supposed to get Solitude. Or maybe my opponent will have the Spell Pierce. 
and I don't need to think about this. Looks like that's the plan. Any land off the top. One time dealer. That doesn't do. Ugh, that sucks. Uh, we're just gonna cycle this, I think. I'm gonna take the wooded foothills there, and I'm just going to cycle this. Yeah, there's the land. I think I want to hold on to it, so I can discard it to an Archon trigger, if my opponent does have an Archon. And then maybe, potentially, if I get really lucky, I can top deck another land, and then I can just go Titania into, into fetch. Yeah, so if they go for it, we're pretty screwed. There's nothing we can do. If they have the creativity, they just have it. Yep, can't punish you. So, suck that, suck that. And if I find the land, maybe I get to do some stuff, but even that stuff is not particularly great. Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna concede now. Uh, let's go to Cyber of the Games, where I bring in the Hallowed Moonlight, I bring in the Orvar, I bring in Elish Norn, and I bring in the Engineered Explosives. And then we can cut the Bojuka Bog, we can cut potentially Soul Guide Lantern, I think I'd rather have Peeding Needle. Um, not super high on Endurance, and I'm not super high on Prismatic Ending either. I think I'm gonna cut some Gracers instead though. Uh, maybe like one Prismatic Ending, one Titania? Because I'm already bringing Elish Norn and I don't want to be super flooded on 5 drops. Yeah, so now having access to Orvar and Elish Norn, like th this gives me a, a bunch of tools. So now my, my Elanamber Skull are going to be a lot better. This is one of the things that I was doing when, when building the deck. I was considering just cutting Gracer number 4 for another copy of Elanamber Skull because that's going to make my Cyber the Games that much better. Cole can be clunky in multiples though. So, you know, you, you win some, you lose some kind of deal. All right, what do we got here? Uh, this hand looks decent. Let's keep it. Would definitely love to. Would definitely love to find another land off the top, but I'm just gonna go turn one Temple Garden, I think. And I'm gonna sandbag these explosives until it matters. So play a Reclaimer, say go. There are certain cards that kill a Reclaimer, which is obviously bad for for me. But if they don't have it, Flagstones is my best draw. Uh that's interesting. I think I'm gonna play. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play that out. Like it's really awkward because I don't get to activate Reclaimer this turn, but I think that's okay. Getting there for one. So now we are gonna get to play Saga, and we basically are never tapping out of Elambris Elambris Call anymore. The other option would have been to like play Saga and then suck the Saga to get Flagstones, and that that allows me to get the Flagstones engine going one turn uh, sooner. So that is certainly another option. Flagstones. So Temple Garden doesn't really do anything. Uh, Ursa Saga doesn't really do anything either, though. I guess it does secretly mess with my opponent's stuff. Because I, I, I'm not going to have the mana to start activating this thing. That's the issue. I think I'm just going to play another Temple Garden tap and say go. I'm just going to play Saga next turn. I don't really have any rush. If they play a Teferi, I think I call in response. It's funny how neither of us are doing anything. <laughs> Here we go. Sack that. I think even if they kill this, I still get a Flagstones. Just having it in play does stuff for me. Like, it makes my top decks better. Okay, so they finally found the Bolt. That's fine. It's a nice one. That is definitely a nice one. So I'm going to play out the Explosives on zero. See what my opponent does. But if they have Artifact Removal, they're going to be priced into using it on the Explosives. And then we can potentially blow them out with Hallowed Moonlight. It's kind of awkward, we kind of have too much hate now. <laughs> we kind of have too much. Steam Vents Shock. Okay. Um, so they have Spell Pierce. I think that's fine. Do I want to cash this in? I think so, because I really want to find a land, actually. Alright, there you go. So now Fable is going to not do anything. We untap and I'm just going to put this Titania into play. That's how we were getting more stuff anyway, so... I think I actually am just gonna chill. Because now I just get to call for Orvar and make a Construct. So I'm putting my opponent in a little bit of an awkward spot. And then next turn I can Titania and I can still hold up uh, Explosives. And again, my opponent can't really win while this Explosives is in play anyways, so... This is just fine. So let's call. I could call for Elish Norn. I'm just gonna call for Orvar, just have that insurance. And we're gonna let the Fable go. 
I think I'm getting... <laughs> Am I getting Needle on Foothills here? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting Needle on Foothills. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, Shadow Spear is a pretty bad draw. I can make a Construct. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna make a Construct now. I think it's I think it's better at this point to just take it slow. My opponent can force me to like sack my thing, but I think I'm just gonna get Peating Needle and Wooded Foothills. Play a land, play Shadow Spear. That's gonna grow Construct. Swing for five. Still holding up Engineered Explosives. Oh, I, I locked myself out by naming Foothills. <laughs> I just realized this. That's hilarious. <laughs> Whoops. Maybe I just played myself here. Maybe I just played myself a little bit. Just a little bit. Whoopsies. I didn't I didn't even think about the fact that this <laughs> this applies to the both of us. Funny how I had like the only <laughs> my my the, the one that I had in play was exactly the only one that we share. <laughs> There's only one fetch land that both of us are playing. I guess there's a single to narrate Mesa, so never mind. That's very funny, though. That's very funny. Well, I'm definitely blocking the shaman with the construct. And now let's make them. Let's say that my opponent makes two token, uh, two dudes here. I still am pretty ahead. Opponent knows about the Orvar. Five mana for Elish Norn. Okay. Okay, so they just hard cast an Elish Norn there. Sacred Foundry doesn't do anything. Well, hard cast Elish Norn is pretty good here. Not gonna lie. So now I actually need to be. Wait, can I beat this now? <laughs> so now if they if they actually uh, they um, target one of their Kikis, do I just die? I think I may just die. I mean, I still get the Orvar into play. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to suit up and I have to swing with both. I have to swing with both. My opponent can double block the one that's not, that doesn't have the Shadow Spear on. I guess it doesn't matter which one they double block. I'm still going to kill the Reflection. And it's important to kill the Reflection because that it, otherwise my opponent is going to have two Reflections next turn. So if they have two Reflections next turn, that's going to be really awkward because... Um, if they find a land, they can just target both, and they're gonna get a bunch of triggers from an Archon. So if the, if I only have the one Archon, maybe I get to continue playing. So they take it down to four, and I think I just pass the turn now. Not playing out the land, because I don't think it really does anything. Man, Elish Norn is kind of a beating. I could have called for my own. Ugh. Man, I feel like I, I, feel like I really misplayed this at some point. So Solitude doesn't do anything. They're gonna get two triggers now. They're actually gonna get four triggers. Oh, this is brutal. Oof. At least the tokens don't do anything. So they can't target the, the dwarf tokens. So they need to target the reflections. Oh, the opponent. I mean, I have to do this, right? But but this actually gives me a shot. I imagine they have another one. That's why they did that. I imagine they just have another creativity. But I can't beat another creativity, so it's fine. All right, that's good. That is definitely good. So play out the Surin Orb, cast Titania. No! Leyline Bind is gonna steal my Surin Orb now. Ugh. I mean, at least this is better than the alternative, right? <laughs> Where my opponent takes my Titania instead of my Surin Orb. So now if I find Boseju, I win the game, which is good, I guess. Can't beat another Creativity unless I find my own Elish. If I find my old Elish, we'll, we may be in good shape. I wonder if they do take my Needle. I imagine they do. Kind of no reason not to. Man, if, if I had Tutor for Elish Norn instead of instead of uh, this Orvar, we would be in much better shape right now. Well, Seiju would be awesome. Oh, okay. It like, looks like they don't have it. Interesting. Well, I mean, they're going to make a bunch of Reflections on Instep anyway, but Flagstones. Ugh. Doesn't do anything. Ay, uh, yeah, 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 definitely, definitely play, I, I messed this up at some point. I most certainly messed this up at some point. Reflection is such a stupid card. Interesting, not using the last one. Okay, they swim with everything. So here's a Solitude. Man, <laughs> staring at this stupid Orbar. <laughs> if this were my own Elish Norn, damn it. All right, all right, all right, I punted that game away. I definitely punted that game away. If that had been my own Elish Norn, 
we would be in such great shape. Anyway, see you next round. Round number three. This hand looks uh, decent enough for me to want to keep it. It's interesting what we lead on. I think I'm going to lead on this, the wooded foothills. Black Cliff Cliffs is interesting. Yeah, I think I'm leading on foothills and I'm gonna go with turn one reclaimer. Uh, once again, the upside is just really, really high. I'm gonna get stomping ground though. Uh, the reason being obviously that I can, um, I can play a rain if I draw it. So my opponent has removal spell here. Obviously that sucks. I'd rather my reclaimer survive, but it's fine. We still have stuff that we that we can do, right? Like we, we got double saga going on. We have we, now we drew a Titania, which is obviously fantastic. Unclear what we're up against. Could be scam once again. Figure out soon enough. All right, so my opponent plays Dothy, which is kind of terrifying. Like this card is so so great against us. The neat thing is that we just do get to kill it, which is cool. <laughs> so, get a basic planes, prismatic ending this, move on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Dothy Voidwalker is surprisingly great against us. No third land drop. It's not a bad one. So let's go with another Reclaimer. And now I think I'm going to go with Saga here. Sure, if my opponent is... If they if they have a Blood Moon in hand and they just find the land and slam a Blood Moon, obviously my Saga dies, that sucks. But even if that happens, next turn we can turn Reclaimer into a 5-5, which is nice. Okay, so now they have... Uh, hopefully they don't have the Scam, because Scam is going to race us. But then we're going to be able to Titania. So I think we're going to be able to raise the, the Fury here. Uh, actually, we even get to Chomp, so we, we're we kind of guaranteed to raise this Fury, so that's nice. Interesting. Huh. I can take 8, I guess. Yeah, I think this is worth doing. Uh, the reason being, I really want to make sure that I can... Um, this Obviously, we, we don't get any value here, but I don't think my opponent has another Bolt. And... The Nissa means that even if my opponent has Blood Moon, I get to use, uh, like, my Saga dies, and then I just get to play a land, and I still get to cast Titania next turn. So even if they did find the Blood Moon here, which obviously sucks for me, but we still get to do stuff, right? So play a land, make a green mana. This is exactly mana for Titania. Titania is going to get something back. I think I kind of want to just get an Ursa Saga. It's gonna give me the mana, it's gonna give me the elemental or the or the reclaimer, and I get a 5-3 in the process as well. So that's pretty nice. Um so this is the second time this triggers. So that's a solitude. Alright. So I guess next turn we're gonna be killing my opponent's fury. Unless they kill my Nissa. So yeah, obviously really rewarded by playing out the Nissa. Things worked out. I feel very smart. Point obviously attacks. We are obviously going to block. Probably not in the business of dying. And I think if nothing changes, yep, I'm just going to play Saga and just make a white mana. Just so I get a 5-3 and make a white mana and just cast the Solitude. Kill the Fury. And we probably win now. Nice Blood Moon. N this Nissa card is... <laughs> this Nissa card sure is something. This Nissa card sure is doing stuff. All right, so once again, scam. I like Sanctifier. I think I like Endurance. I definitely want Bosages. Cut one bog. I think I want Hallowed Moonlight. Kind of unclear. Cut a couple of Reclaimers. Cut a Flagstones. Maybe cut a Saga even. And then we can cut... They showed me that they are on a Duffy Boyd Walker version, so I definitely want the Prismatic Endings. Definitely want the Sanctifier. I think I can cut down a Call and maybe cut a Gracer. I do feel like I want to max on uh, max out on Prismatic Endings. All right, what do we got here? Uh, we got, got Perfect Mana, and we have an answer to a Monkey. I think I'm keeping this. We have an answer to a Monkey. Sure, Scam sucks. If they have the turn one grief, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, but well, there you go. So now we're just going to get clocked very quickly, but I mean, just kind of how it goes sometimes. What are you going to do? I mean, we have some very, very good draws here, right? They take prismatic ending. Okay, so 
we can draw Reclaimer, we can draw... Um, actually, what's his name would have been fantastic. Uh, I think I want to go with Arid Mesa. Obviously, if they have Blood Moon, you know, they have Blood Moon, whatever. Uh, but this just makes my mana so much better. So if I find if I find a Ren, we're going to be in good shape, stuff like that. Uh, Monkey is bad. Monkey is pretty bad for us. That really speeds up their clock. So I really need to find an answer to this Monkey. I'm probably going to play Saga now, just so I don't get trashed too quickly by this monkey so i can um oh that's terrible all right so this is gonna be a little bit awkward because you never want to play saga on turn two because that means that by the time titania comes down like this saga just it's basically time walks your titania but i feel so pressured by this monkey that i need to i need to do this right now so we're not gonna be able to do anything here i think we'd probably just lose I don't know if there's anything that we can draw that matters at this point. Particularly if they have Dothy here. Okay, they have Thoughtseize. Okay, that's kind of whatever. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this this uh, really, really bad draws. Uh, Alright, pass the turn. So I guess we're going to draw... We're going to get um, Suranorg. I'm not even sure how much that actually helps me, though. This they, We're going to get a 2-2 Construct. I'm going to attempt to block. I guess... Huh. What if I... No, I because I can't really attack. And then my opponent just kills me with the grief attack. So I don't really do anything. So I do have to trade here, unfortunately. Opponent does indeed offer the trade. So I'm just going to make a, con a construct now. See if my opponent wants to let me block. So at least we're on a two-turn clock now. But at least we got rid of the monkey. And opponent passes the turn once again. Um... So making the construct doesn't do anything because I need to get Surinorg. So I guess I'd rather just, I'd rather just, uh, f I guess, flow the mana. I'm just going to play Ren and get back Saga and replay it. So we have to get Surinorg here, otherwise we just lose. We don't have an answer to the grief, but we do get to get Saga now and replay it. So now we got a Saga going on. We're going to, I guess we're going to sacrifice Forest because we can't, we can't beat Blood Moon, right? So no use in playing around that. Next turn, we can use Flagstones to um, basically blank the Grief attack. Obviously, as I just said, we lose to Blood Moon, but hopefully they don't have Fury, I guess. Opponent does indeed go face. Not playing around Blood Moon, so I'm just going to throw that in the trash. Gain some life. Obviously, Lightning Bolt... And I lose. Not much to do there. But now I can start using Flagstones plus Renan 6 to stay alive. But this is a Blood Moon, so yeah. Okay. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Now we're going to be on the play. And I think I want to keep this as is. Yeah, this looks fine. I guess there's an argument for Chalice of the Void, but I don't think I want to be doing that. It's kind of interesting, but okay, what do we got here? Just a classic one lander in the 28 land deck. You love to see it. Uh, this one is yikes. Um, big yikes. <sighs> yep, down to five we go against this cam deck. Sucks. Uh, keep this one. Gonna keep the Gracer. Gonna keep this Saga. I think I'm bottoming. I think I bottom Titania and Hallowed Moonlight. And we're just going to go turn one Gracer into Saga. And the, basically, my hope here is that my opponent kept their hand because they are going to grief me, which is going to do nothing. <laughs> so, also, we're going to be able to pop this Saga before my opponent gets any value, which is nice. Uh, definitely going to be making a Construct on my opponent's sense step here. Going to pass the turn. The question is what to get with the Saga. Dothy is pretty brutal here. Dothy is pretty rough. Uh, and tap land would be interesting because it allows me to make a 4-4. Um, yeah, I guess I want to make sure that I have a dude here. So I think I'm just going to get Expedition Map, play a land, and swing for 3. We're going to hope to race. Obviously, if my opponent has the... Uh, the good thing is that there are a bunch of things that don't matter. Like Blood Moon doesn't matter, for example. Season Pyro also doesn't do too much here like it's fine but it's not insane or anything all right swing for three i'll take it ending is 
kind of nice, actually. It's a little bit awkward because I need to play Soul Guide first because I want to make my constructs into 4-4s, four but I guess it's fine. That exiles the monkey. My dudes are 4-4s. Four I guess I could have prismatic ending one of these, I th but I think I'm just going to ending Dothy. Actually, let's swing with both of these. They can throw all of them in front of the... Oh, just double chomp. Oh, that's great. That is very good for me. So now we get rid of Dothy. We're kind of doing stuff here. There's an argument for drawing a fetch land there for like a cracking map for a fetch land so next turn I can Nissan to fetch. But I think that these constructs are kind of doing some serious work. Obviously my opponent can have something like, you know, a Fury Scam or they can have Engineered Explosives and then we're going to be in a lot of trouble. But even still, like even if they do have all that stuff, we can just do something like... Um, that's grief, yeah. Okay, so that gets rid of Nissa. that sucks. Uh, but, so, ugh, that's rough. I'm probably still swinging, just cracking for eight. Yeah. So I'm gonna swing for eight here, see if my opponent wants to double block. Okay, so they do go for the double block. This is actually pretty decent for me, I think. So that gets rid of one problem. Uh, I think I'm just going to... <sighs> Man, so... We have a bunch of options here. We can map for Saga and play Saga. If my opponent has Blood Moon, we probably lose the game on the spot. We can also map for Fetch Land. If we do that, that means that we're going to have our mana solved. The problem is that we're not really doing anything. Uh, we can also map for Boseju, but that doesn't really do too much either. Alternatively, we can just play Random Plus and do nothing. <sighs> Man, it's so bad. The, good, the thing is that if my opponent Blood Moons, uh, it, this also blanks another another Grief, which is great. But otherwise, I'm giving my opponent a good target for their Fury, and I get no value from the Renan 6. This is super close. This is super, super close, I think. I could also just crack this Soul Guide Lantern. I think I'm going to go for Saga. I think this is the highest upside play. And I already mold to five, like I'm already pretty far behind here. Like I need to start to do some powerful things. Otherwise I'm going to, I'm just going to get outclassed. Three mana for another season power. Okay, this is good. This is good for me. Mm, they had the Feign Death Fury. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So the question now is, do I want to crack this? I think I do. I think I'm in a cantrip looking for a fetch land. <laughs> Second Ren, not so great. Endurance. Well, that is certainly interesting. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna go for Construct here. I think my opponent was digging for Blood Moon last turn. That's why they played the Season Power Mancer. Point attacks. Just gonna block with the Gracer on the Season Power. So if my opponent has has Fury now, they can just kill the Construct and Gracer, but that's kind of just fine. They do nothing instead. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is very interesting. Uh, I'm not going to make a Construct, I'm just going to float a mana and I'm just going to go for Ren and Six here. Shadow Spear into play, red and green, play Ren, I'm going to plus on Saga. My opponent could have Call Against Command here, that seems fine. Turns out they have, what, Lightning Bolt? Can work with that. Play another land, Shadow Spear suit up. The question now is, do I, atta do I attack or not? I think I want to protect this Ren. Oh, they have Colligan's Command? Gross. Destroy target artifact and deal two damage to any target. Okay, you got me. So now my opponent's gonna get to swing at Ren, but then I, I get a chomp with the Gracer, which is nice. Also, I can Endurance myself in order to have something to get with Saga, which is very, which is neat. They did find the Blood Moon. That sucks. Everything goes at Ren, lock, and Ren goes down to two. I think I'm just going to ping one of these elementals. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Uh, I guess we're not going to ping the elemental. We're just going to plus one of the Saga. And I'm just going to Boseju you the Blood Moon here. We're going to play Saga, play Reclaimer. Jeez, what a grind. What a grind. I do think that if I, if I untap with Saga and Reclaimer and or Reclaimer... I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape. It's kind of nice that I don't really think, like I can just let this Ren go, so I don't even need to expose the Reclaimer to anything. Fury would be rough. Fury would be quite devastating, but 
that's that was their draw for turn so yeah there's the fury it's pretty pretty bad um not much to do about that one so i know they don't have blood moon here two and two so my rain is dying so i just gonna throw the gracer in front of the season pyromancer so here we can go Ren plus on Boseju, Flagstones. So I guess I don't I don't need to Ren plus anymore. So I can go Ren minus and Monkey. And what a grind. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So Ren and just minus and Monkey past the turn. My opponent kind of needs to kill this Ren. So they're gonna need to throw everything in front of it. Ugh, that's brutal. Oh, that's so good for my opponent. Wait, everything goes face? Wait, what? Okay, so this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can just take eight down to seven. Okay, I still need to be mindful of the Season Power Master in my opponent's graveyard. I'm gonna make a construct on end step, and I guess I can, I can use Saga to tutor for Shadow Spear if I endurance myself with a trigger on the stack. Otherwise, this is getting Suren Orb. Prismatic Ending is a good draw. Prismatic Ending is definitely a good draw. I think that's what I'm doing. I think we're going to go make Construct to get Suren Orb, and then just Prismatic Ending the Dolphy. And now we get to kill one of these Elemental Tokens. Or I can go get Boseju so I can make sure that I win. Uh, if I find Titania, yeah, I think I'm just going to plus on Boseju. But I'm not gonna play it out just, just yet. Oh, I should have sacked Suren Orb. Flagstones to Suren Orb and then plus Ren on Flagstones, played Flagstones. Yeah, that was a pretty bad mistake, actually. So we're not gonna attack, because I think we can play the longer game now. Hidetsu consumes all? Wow, that's a top deck. <laughs> that is a top deck, all right. Um, so I guess I'm gonna gain a life. Jesus, really? That's the top deck now? Oh my god, I can't believe that. So this is gonna kill both of their elementals. And I guess I'm gonna go down to one. Yeah, I, I can't suck my lands. Because my draw is still Titania, right? The way that I win this game is still Titania. Although I guess now I don't have Flagstone. I don't have Suren Orb, so... Dude, must be nice to be this lucky. I think my opponent is trying to figure out whether they're supposed to, like, Fury kill my Ren or to go face. Because I would go in at a one. Yeah, they go face with both. So I can draw Reclaimer, I guess? If I draw Reclaimer, maybe we can play on. Finally find a fetch land 17 turns after. Uh, I mean, I can kill this, but then I just I just die anyway. So if I had done that last turn, I would have had one more land to play, but it wouldn't really have changed anything. Yeah, my opponent was better on top decking than I was, unfortunately for me. All right. There we go. Just getting scammed once again. Round number four. This hand doesn't do anything. Uh, unless I knew that I would be playing against Living End or something, then I would snap keep that hand. <laughs> uh, this hand is great. So let's bottom Titania. So what this hand can do is we can go turn one, basic forest, gracer into garden, and we're going to be able to turn two, go uh, Ren into plus on fetch line into play reclaimer. So this hand is kind of nutty, honestly. Playing against the Vile deck. This hand is nuts. This hand is absolutely nuts. I think I'm gonna get a Temple Garden here. And here's Reclaimer. Pass the turn. Which decks are playing either Vile these days? <laughs> that, that plays no covered planes. Maybe a weird version of Hammer, maybe... I mean, it can't be the Spike deck the Elementals deck because it's not revealing Kahira. Maybe just some old school classic Death and Taxes? In which case, Ren and Six is basically two mana win the game, so... Damn, the respect. They may have Ephemerate, though. They do have Ephemerate. So we're now gonna be playing Creatures. Interesting that they, they pitched Giver of Runes. I imagine they have another one, because like that Giver could have actually blocked. It's a nice draw. All right. Prismatic Canding, get rid of the... Either vial. If they do indeed have Giver, this play is not so great, but I think this is fine. Um, we're gonna be calling for sure, but I'm not sure what we're gonna be calling for. 
and this run has done its job so i'm probably i i'm not gonna like call for a reclaimer just so i can force something you know field versus the onboard running six you'll love to see it so that happens um there's a giver and let's assume that my opponent's got ephemerate in hand if they do indeed have ephemerate in hand i think i'm getting nissa here but the question is what would i rather do would i rather they kill nissa or would i rather they kill my titania flagstones doesn't really do anything just yet i think i'm just gonna go for nissa here we can only make four mana but yeah i think i'd rather just just do this play that make green fetch if they have ephemerate they can kill my solitude but uh, so we can only find a 1, 2, and 3 drop. So I, whatever I get here is going to be tapped. So let's get Sacred Foundry tapped because I already have 3 mana. Green, <laughs> Titania. Okay, well never mind then. Pass the turn. Well, we're going to get to do some stuff next turn. This Ren did, did some work. Thank you, Ren. Appreciate you. Wait, really? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ecstatic about this. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely excited about uh, just eating a giver for no reason. Okay, so they had the the value play, I guess. But, I mean, we're kind of going to go off here. We drew a Saga, too. That's funny. Um, I'm trying to think. I think it's better to do this. So we're going to play the Saga first, make some green mana, and just do it like so. So I have better color the mana so this gets back windswept heath make green see what we find solitude and my opponent has seen enough well there you go yeah death and taxes style deck usually get destroyed by by my, usually the decks that i play <laughs> uh hallowed moonlight is very cute probably not good enough boseju seems pretty decent i do like reclaimers not the biggest fan of gracer how Moon, like as I was saying, is cute against specifically, um, what's his name? The uh, Aether Vial. I think I'd rather have Engineered Explosives. And same is true for Elish Norn. Elish Norn sounds great. Endurance is medium. I guess Soul Guide is worse than Peeling Needle. Peeling Needle can name Give of Runes. Yep, this is a very, very good draw. Very good draw. I love how we have the nuts draw the nuts so draws against what is probably a buy for my deck <laughs> honestly it's pretty unlucky if you really think about it I'm, I'm just getting unlucky right here i guess technically i could I'm, I'm fetching a temple garden by the way so if my opponent has turned two leon in arbiter i can just play the boseju and kill it but hey look at that feeling so smart about here kill that one not my first rodeo <laughs> Not my first rodeo against this card. There you go. See you next round. Last round. Uh, this is an interesting hand, actually. I think I'm going to... I mean, I'm definitely going to keep it. The sequencing is what makes this hand interesting, because Stitcher Supplier. That's a card I've not seen in a minute. Uh, well, now we're doing good. So, play Reclaimer past the turn. Ledger Shredder, Carrion Feeder, Priced Amalgam. Okay, so we're probably playing against some... Um, some crab vine sort of action. I'm gonna hope to dodge, and if we dodge right now, we should be in good shape. All right, yeah, we're, we're good now. Yeah, definitely blocking. I don't think that's a good attack. I think my opponent got a little bit hasty. Um, so play Flagstones. I think I pass the turn. Maybe I get punished by a fetch line and my opponent gets their Bloodgast back. All right, there you go. Are they milled first? Well, now I'm I'm eating I'm e eating a block gas for free. This is great. So Jedmir's Garden. I'm just gonna get Bojugabog. Bojugabog out of here. So now we're gonna be able to go Nissa into Fetchland. <laughs> Hard cast amalgam. Okay, that is something. Take five. <laughs> That's nice. That's very nice. Um, so Nissa into Fetchland gives me three mana of any color that I want, and then I can. I guess Gracer plus Activate Reclaimer. I'm definitely playing Nissa. That's the easy part. So let's play this first. Fetch for green. Play Fetch Land. I think I want to maybe double Prismatic Ending. Go to Planes. 
I could also just prismatic ending one of these amalgams. Feels like Hedron Crab is how I lose this game though. I already have the green mana. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna make a I'm just gonna make a, a white mana here. No, a red mana. Make red mana. Gracer. Play this. Make green mana now. And I'm just going to kill one of these amalgams. That just slows down the clock significantly. And now I can just swing with this reclaimer because value. Probably not trading Nisa, say that much. Still chilling at 14. Double Amalgam is scary. Another Grave Crawler doesn't do anything. Carrion Feeder is very good for my opponent. Yeah, that's that's actually very good for my opponent there. Now I'm gonna block with the Gracer. I think we can get more value. Uh, I do think this Titania plus Reclaimer interaction is gonna be good enough. Okay. Just gonna be able to kill this, fortunately, but. But yeah, the, the late trigger is going to stack. They're going to get three, 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 threes. But we're also going to get a bunch of five threes. And I think five threes are bigger than three threes. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Okay, so Titania. Boom. Get back. Do we get back Fetchland or Flagstones? If we get back, if we get back Flagstones, we get to activate Reclaimer, sacking Flagstones, getting two more triggers getting two more, two more lands in play. But Fetchland gives me more 5-3s. I think I like 5-3s better. Right? Nissa is strong. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I will say that Nissa feels strong in this deck. Uh, let's make a white mana. We found another Titania. Um, we can Reclaimer for Bog. Reclaimer, Bog find flax stones. I can also get another saga. I think I want to I need I need to kill this carrion feeder because it's going to eventually get out of hand, but I also don't need to kill it now necessarily. So let's play second reclaimer and then activate pitching bog. Another dude. I can get Boseju, that's another 5-3. I think I like that. Boseju is another opponent just has it enough. Okay. All right, so sanctifier seems good. Hallowed moonlight also seems good. Endurance also seems good. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I think that's it. This Nisa card sure is something, huh? <laughs> this this Nisa card is okay. This Nisa card is all right. Okay, I think I'm going to cut a couple of endings. I don't think I care about Elish. Could see cutting down a Titan. Maybe a Solitude. Solitude is maybe a little bit awkward. It's just slow. Not necessarily, not necessarily bad. It's just very slow. Uh, maybe Ren and Six can go. Two copies. I do like all of my Tudor targets there. Yeah, I think this is fine. Okay. So this hand can't cast Ren. It's missing land drops. I think I can do better than this. It can call for endurance, but this hand actually has the endurance. So obviously it's better, you know? Um, I think this is a fine keep. The question is, what do I want to go with? Do I want to throw away Titania? Titania is my end game. Alternatively, I can just Gracer. But the Gracer allows me to just hard cast Endurance on turn two. I'm definitely not shipping the lands. I think I'm just gonna bottom the Soul Guide, actually. A little bit awkward, but I think it's the right line. Because it just doesn't fit in my curve, right? Because I'm definitely very interested in hard casting this Endurance if I can. That's a good draw. That's a really good draw. Yeah, we're gonna do that one. That's a very, very good draw. So now if my opponent doesn't find they can't go off, right? Because I have Endurance plus Gracer. So even though they have this, but now I also have Flax Stones. Let's see what they do. That's nothing. And that is one bench fine. I honestly think that I can beat this one bench. Unearth? <laughs> that is cute. All right. I mean, that kind of works, huh? It's not great for my opponent right there, but we even get to sanctify them. Testify. So we know they have one land. So they're gonna get to the lot of milling here, but we already have Bojuga Bog, so it's gonna be really hard for my opponent to be able to play around this. We have Bojuga Bog and Endurance. No one. It's a grave crawler. But they don't have a, they don't have a yeah, they, just nothing worked out for my opponent here. Very unfortunate for them. I mean it, it is kind of how this deck works, right? Like sometimes you just roll over your opponent if you get lucky and sometimes you just do nothing and just lose. Um, I don't even need to bog them here. <laughs> I can just 
I can just slow roll the Bajuga Bog. <laughs> yeah, my opponent just concedes because like, I, I don't even need to do anything. <laughs> That's brutal. But yeah, that kind of match, that kind of matchup. It's really funny how we played against what are possibly some of the best possible matchups for this style of deck, which is very funny. All right, so this felt pretty good actually. Nissa is is really messed up. Nissa is really really messed up in this shell. Uh, the the synergies with Reclaimer are very impressive. Just like the downside of Reclaimer being it costs two mana to activate. But like the synergy with Flagstones plus Nissa, meaning that it just activates, it just enables Nissa by itself at effectively zero mana, is very strong. Like I, I, I'm surprised at how well this card plays. I think that maybe the one of Endurance and Solitude are not where I want to be. Like the Solitude was kind of awkward. Um, I mean, it's there more as a necessary evil more than anything else. Like I just need to be able to answer a Merc type region if, if it gets down to it. Like we actually have no answers at all to that card besides just slowing it down with Endurance and racing it with Titania plus um, plus uh, Shadow Spear. So Solitude being there as specifically an answer to Merc that I think it's kind of what I have to do since I'm not playing Leyline Binding because obviously if, if we have Leyline Binding uh, that's that's just not an issue anymore like Merc that just gets gets tackled by that which is why it was so tempting for and why I was trying to make that work however the mana base in this version was so much smoother like the mana just worked every time <laughs> the mana worked every time i think it was like exactly one hand that i had to mulligan where i had like boseju flagstones and ren or something like that but uh, you know the 10 fetch lands were pr fantastic it just allows me to uh, to just have ren and six going more often than not same thing with reclaimer so really really big fan of how much better the mana base is uh, however the it's a problem, right? Like not having access to an answer to probably one of the most prevalent and harder to deal with threats in the format is a big deal. So having access to Solitude may help that. It's a little bit awkward, but Anissa is really strong. I, I'm, I'm surprised at how good this card is. It just continues overperforming every time that I try this deck out. And I it makes me want to keep tinkering with it you know like it just makes me want to keep messing around with it and keep trying to see where the holes are uh we lost against creativity and scam i think both match uh, the first matchup the the one against creativity i i think i lost if i had gone for elish nor i think we we win that game very easily instead i went with orvar and i just ended up doing nothing my opponent was able to play around it um so i feel like if i had gone for elish nor would have been in just much much better shape and um yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if if I could have done anything against the scam because my opponent just had scam hands, and there's that's kind of how that deck works, right? Like some hands you literally just cannot beat. So, um, yeah, I I like this deck a lot. I actually enjoy it. I, I'm, it's the first time in a while that I'm excited about it, and I feel like it has legs now. Uh, so very very excited about that hopefully you are as well if you're if you're watching this video and if you enjoyed it make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video folks take care and bye bye